everyone. Happy Halloween. Very, very excited to have you here. Um, my name is Molly McKinley. I'm the PL Andres lead. And my name is Raul Kripalani. I'm the FEM project lead. And we're super excited to introduce to you the most exciting new upgrade in Filecoin since mainnet launch. By this stage, I'm sure many of you have heard about the Filecoin virtual machine. But just to recap, the FVM project delivers on-chain programmability, aka smart contracts, to the Filecoin network. This is a big deal because it enables developers to customize what the Filecoin network can do for its users besides storage and retrieval. For the first time, developers get to build not with Filecoin, but rather on Filecoin as a platform. And these are just some of the applications that we are personally so excited about. Data DAOs, liquid staking, under collateralized lending, decentralized compute, and a lot more is possible with the FVM. Let's dive into a few of these. First, staking and loans. There's a huge opportunity for Filecoin token holders to put their resources to work within the Filecoin economy, helping Filecoin storage providers access fill for storage collateral and offering interest in exchange. These loans can even be under collateralized thanks to the on-chain storage history of past storage provider performance, which can be used to generate reputation scores that identify good borrowers. Loans can even be automatically repaid to investors by using a multi-sig as the storage provider owner address that includes lenders and a third party to help negotiate payback. These new smart contracts give every token holder access to new yield opportunities on their token holdings while also benefiting the whole Filecoin economy. For another example, we know that many data storage clients don't just want to store data for a year or two. They want to store once and leave the long-term persistence problem to the network itself. Filecoin has always put control of data storage in the hands of individuals and clients, but FVM unlocks new opportunities. With FVM, perpetual storage becomes a simple smart contract on top of Filecoin's verifiable storage proofs. Just provision a wallet with a storage endowment and set repair bots to monitor your data CIDs and storage deals always making a new storage deal with qualifying storage providers whenever Filecoin's daily proofs of storage indicate a copy needs replication. This gives you the same long-term permanence that other blockchains claim, while also benefiting from Filecoin's verifiable storage proofs, which ensure that your data is being stored and replicated correctly by the network, raising the bar for responsible data preservation everywhere. FVM also unlocks new programmable storage tools, like the suite of on-chain dot storage solutions that offer multi-protocol storage, retrieval assurance contracts, data bounties, and many more. FVM is also unlocking a new way for the Filecoin ecosystem to monetize and coordinate. New ERC-20 tokens can be launched on top of FVM or bridged directly to token pools on other chains. And L2 networks can plug into Filecoin to benefit from its storage power and security. This gets even more exciting when you introduce data access controls. For example, a threshold encryption network like Medusa can individually or programmatically govern who can access a data collection without any of the contract validators having the data's access themselves. This is even more exciting as a tool to power and govern data DAOs. The FVM allows a group of individuals or organizations to curate and preserve a collection of data, like this collection of all NFTs ever created. These collections can also govern or monetize data access and pool the returns from data access into a shared DAO treasury to fund the collection's preservation and growth long term. You can even program your own smart contract to automate the growth and monetization of your data collection by generating and acquiring new data using that shared treasury. 
This all helps power and harness step three of the Filecoin master plan to unlock compute over data stored in Filecoin to enable web scale applications. Today, we have over 280 petabytes of data stored on Filecoin, nearly 9x what we had one year ago. And most of this is valuable open source data, like the collection of all NFTs, the million song data set, Landsat, Folding at Home, Flickr Commons, Internet Archive, and more. And these open data sets are a great opportunity to make available to compute networks, helping avoid duplication in storage and computing resources. Filecoin is already bringing this powerful new ecosystem to the rest of Web3, helping provide cheap storage and soon computation to the chain history of other networks. Solana, for example, is already backing up their chain state to Filecoin. But with FVM, we can actually become a data availability layer for Web3 that also provides long-term storage, decreasing the requirements for validators across the Web3 ecosystem. We expect the Filecoin virtual machine to support many layer two computation networks that optimize for different quadrants of Juan's triangle, either optimizing for verifiability through ZK proofs, or privacy through fully homomorphic encryption, or for specific use cases like image processing, ETL, or machine learning pipelines. All of these together unlock a huge new opportunity for massive scale data science. Scientists can better collaborate on shared data sets, publish and earn rewards from valuable process data, and accelerate the global data analytics industry, which is expected to reach over $346 billion by 2030. This new activity is going to increase the Filecoin chain activity massively. And we're getting ready for that scalability demands with interplanetary consensus, a new generation consensus construction that allows storing child chains and seamlessly transferring state from chain to chain. FVM, compute over data, and interplanetary consensus combine to create the programmability, computation, and scalability needs for web scale applications to grow and thrive on Filecoin, like Twitter, Netflix, TikTok, Spotify, and more. Next, Raul's gonna tell us more about how FVM is unlocking these epic new capabilities through its architecture, developer experience, and community growth. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Molly. Um, I'm Raul. I'm the project lead for, for FEM. And today, I'm going to go through the architecture, the developer experience, and I'll talk about the awesome community that is forming around FEM. And hopefully, you will get to be a part of it as well. So on the technical front, when we conceived the FEM, we envisioned a system that could host multiple runtimes and serve as a seamless conductor between them. Uh, this is important because blockchain runtimes are still developing uh, very rapidly, and they're harboring different developer communities uh, with, that prefer different languages, that approach things very differently. Uh, and we don't know exactly which one of those is eventually going to win. Uh, right now, that we know that the EVM is, is, um, is one of those runtimes that the Web3 community is really uh, revolving around, but there might be other runtimes in the future. Uh, so, and, and in reality, all of these chains, if you think of it, uh, all of these chains actually need, um, or, or these runtimes and the workloads and the programs running in these runtimes eventually need access to storage. Uh, really, storage is such a core primitive in computing in general uh, that you can't really decouple it uh, from, from, from the blockchain. So really, what we're trying to build with the FEM is a multi-runtime multi environment such that as these runtimes are developing, we'll be able to host them on the FEM and give them seamless access to, to storage. Now, we drew for, to make this possible, we drew inspiration from the hypervisor model, the actor model and the Linux kernel. For us, um, hypervisors, the model of the hypervisor basically uh, 
creates the underlying substrate that allows hosting these multiple runtime uh, environments on top of it. Essentially, what it does is it virtualizes the, the machine. Uh, the actor model, uh, on the other hand, is we, we think of it as the, in, as the interaction paradigm between the different workloads that would be running on top of these, on top of these runtimes, smart contracts, programs, uh, you name it. And then on the other hand, we also drew inspiration from the Linux kernel itself, things like isolation, uh, how we manage and, and map memory, uh, the environment, storage abstractions, and the way that uh, workloads and programs and smart contracts are able to access those through syscalls. Now, just to give you a little bit more of a deeper dive into how this works, this is what the FEM, the technical architecture of the FEM, looks like. First of all, it is based on WebAssembly, and we're using WASM time in our, from the Bytecode Alliance in our reference implementation of the, of the FEM. In the future, there might be more implementations of the FEM. Uh, if you're interested in hacking uh, through WASM, interested in, in, in WASM itself, and want to take this as a project uh, of yourself, we're excited to see more, more implementations of the FEM emerge, so come speak to us. Um, now, you can think of WASM itself running at the hypervisor layer. Uh, the FEM can, as I said before, it can, power, it can power multiple runtimes like the EVM, secure ECMAScript, and more through the virtualization model. Uh, each actor that runs on the FEM runs in isolation and can basically, uh, it, it runs inside a sandbox and it can basically escape that sandbox uh, through by making syscalls, very much inspired by the Linux model. Now, a very important part of all of this is that all data managed by the FEM is actually content address, address data. So essentially, all data, whether it's parameters, blocks, storage, and so on, everything is IPLD data. Um, which also models links between these different blocks, which creates a very powerful model such that in the future, the FEM could support, or parts of the FEM could support not just uh, smart contract execution, but also more complex workloads uh, going forward that operate on content, on content address data. Now, uh, two critical elements of the FEM as well is that it supports foreign addressing, uh, this is important because when you're bringing in runtimes, uh, they usually come in with implicit assumptions about how, they're address, how they address other smart contracts and so on. For example, the EVM runtime uh, uses 160-bit addressing, and it's really important to be able to, if, if we want to create that seamless conductor between runtimes, to be able to support a multi-addressing multi model. And that's basically, uh, that's basically one, uh, why foreign addressing is such an important part of this. Um, now, the FEM also uh, performs gas accounting and execution halt by, instrument, by instrumenting the WASM bytecode. Today, basically what the FEM does is it meters execution, and as of today, we're using that metering to determine execution halt. But in the future, with projects like IPVM, for example, that our friends at Fission are working on, uh, which is creating a more uh, generalized compute environment for content address data, uh, those metering characteristics and those metering flows can be used for, for other things, like, for example, uh, cost uh, metering and charging uh, the user for the execution of workloads and so on. Now, shipping the FEM itself is a hard engineering endeavor as it transforms the entire execution layer of the network. That's why we've been delivering this project in stages. Earlier in July this year, we shipped the SCUR network upgrade to Filecoin mainnet. And this upgrade installed the FEM on mainnet. So this means that everything that's currently running on mainnet is actually already powered by the FEM. This is currently just built-in actors um, because the FEM as it stands in mainnet is not programmable yet. So the FEM core team is hard at work uh, built, uh, creating the programmability and adding pro programmability to the network. This is coming through the first programmability milestone, which is 2.2. Now, the first, the first runtime that we're shipping is the Filecoin uh, EVM, which we also call FEBIM. And this makes Filecoin entirely compatible with Ethereum. This allows Filecoin to meet Web3 developers, existing Web3 developers, where they are, because we, people get to reuse their existing knowledge of languages like Solidity, Yule, libraries like Web3.js, and Ethers, and awesome tools like Truffle, Hard Hat, Foundry, and Remix. They just work with Filecoin. Uh, and another added benefit of this is that folks can deploy 
contracts that have already been battle tested and audited heavily in the Ethereum network directly into Filecoin, giving rise to all these basic primitives like ERC-20 tokens, NFTs, DAOs, DEXs, and so on uh, pretty quickly in the Filecoin network. Now, this milestone required whole new protocol developments, like a whole new address class, account abstraction, and on-chain events. And the Lotus client, as of today, already supports the Ethereum JSON RPC API, which enables existing Ethereum tools uh, to interact with Filecoin without knowing that they're actually interacting with Filecoin. In the next month, uh, we expect to finish the development of, of this milestone, 2.1. And as we get closer to, to the date, we're lining up a set of hackathons uh, so that developers like you who are in this room uh, can, can get working and building on top of FebM. So keep tuned for opportunities. Now, we expect the, Fal the Falcon EVM to hit mainnet by February 2023. And at that point, we will, meet, we will move our focus to WASM actors and further protocol improvements. And these are important to enable more powerful Falcon applications down the, down the road, and as well to support other protocol developments like IPC, interplanetary consensus. Now, I wanted to let you know about Wallaby. Wallaby is our bleeding edge testnet. Uh, we've been incrementally delivering to Wallaby every week, sometimes even on a daily basis. Uh, it is operated by community members, and it has a hosted RPC endpoint, faucet, and a wallet. So you can just point at it and just start, start hacking. Uh, it also supports the Ethereum JSON RPC API for full compatibility with Ethereum. And it's already seen hundreds of contract deployments throughout its various instantiations. And in the next weeks, Wallaby would be promoted to a stable testnet, which we're calling Buildanet. So as we finish our incremental delivery, uh, our incremental development on Wallaby, we will be promoting this unstable testnet, Wallaby, into Buildanet. Uh, this testnet will not, so Buildanet will not reset frequently. Uh, resets and upgrades will be announced ahead of time. And also Buildanet will be hosting many developer opportunities such as hackathon, acceleration programs, and so on. So make sure to follow along and, uh, follow along and stay tuned if you're interested in those. Now, the Wallaby testnet, as well as other Filecoin networks, can be added with a single click already. Uh, that's, the, that's the video, that's great, uh, can be added with a single click already uh, by going to chainless.org. You just type in uh, Filecoin or Wallaby or whatever, make sure to activate testnets, and with a single click, you can just add it to, to, your, to your wallet, like, for example, MetaMask. Now, I wanted to... Um, I want to spend a few times, as, uh, a few minutes today, also showcasing what the current development experience looks like with with some of these tools. MetaMask is the most popular wallet in the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, where Ethereum JSON RPC, as I said before, already supports MetaMask as of today. You can add the change configuration with uh, through Chainless.org, and you can already perform value transfers, contract calls, contract deployments, and even use the asset tracking features of MetaMask uh, to track ERC20 token holding. Uh, across various contracts on the Filecoin network. Now, another tool that we are, have already tested and we're working extensively with is Remix. Uh, Remix is a lightweight IDE that Ethereum developers have been using for a long time. Uh, today, most developers uh, use integrated plugins and IDEs, such as Visual Studio Code and so on. But Remix re still gets used uh, quite a bit for casual coding. And thanks to the MetaMask uh, Web3 integration, Web3.js integration, contracts written in Remix can be deployed straight away into the Filecoin network and be called and inspected in various ways. Now, another tool that we support is, is Hardhat. Uh, it, it is a very, Hardhat is a very popular development environment for, for uh, developer toolbox for Ethereum developers. Uh, we've created a starter kit for, uh, for FebM, so you can just um, go back. Let me just go back there. Yeah, you'll be, you should be able to, to see it. Oh, yes, sorry. Should be, should be able to see a URL at, at the bottom of the, of the slide. If you want to get started using Hardhat on Wallaby, you can do that straight away. And then another thing uh, that I wanted to highlight here is that the reason why developers want to deploy on Filecoin is really to interact with this powerful storage system, storage market, the storage provider lifecycle, the miner lifecycle, and a lot more. 
Solidity is the most used Web3 development uh, smart contract language. And we want to make it easy for contracts developed in Solidity to be able to use all those parameters that the Filecoin network is providing. So for this, for this reason, we're developing a Solidity library with, uh, with partners of ours uh, that, are, that acts as the, as the glue between Solidity contracts and the Filecoin system itself. So this library will allow you to, we're calling it Filecoin.sol for now. It's a code name. But it will basically allow you to easily call built-in actors uh, to access conveni convenient utilities and data types, and also Filecoin primitives such as randomness, crypto, cryptographic functions, and a lot more. Uh, this library is currently being prototyped, and we expect it to land later in November. Now, a critical piece of user and developer uh, experience are block explorers. Block explorers are essentially the window to everything that's happening on chain. And with the FEM, we might have the handicap of, oh, wow, now we have this whole new dimension of activity that's happening on chain, and we're not able to introspect it or make sense of it. So that's why we're investing early in a new set of new generation explorers. So there is, on the one hand, existing explorers are adapting themselves to, to FEM, like, for example, Philfox. And there's a new set of explorers that are going to be emerging that are being developed by partners in the ecosystem, like Philmine, uh, Glyph, Zondax, amongst others. And each explorer, you might ask, why so many explorers? Because each explorer is going to focus on a different side of the developer experience and the user experience. So over time, we expect that these functionalities will kind of like converge. But for now, we're very keen on exploring different models. Now, if you're excited about everything that you've heard here today and would like to get started building with Febim, you should join the FEM Foundry by following this link up here. There are more than 100 teams and builders that have registered to date. They're building amazing things, and we're very excited to have you too. We run weekly sessions where you get access to the core team to support you closely, and also dedicated channels uh, so you can ask your questions, your burning questions, and get answers very quickly. Now, this is just to give you a taste of what it's like. This is just a screenshot of one of our early builders' calls. Uh, and it's, I can guarantee you it's very fun. And it's great to see, on a weekly basis, all of the progress that the community is making, deploying and experimenting, and really uh, helping us as well test everything that we build in. So every week, we have new presenters, demos, discussions. And we use these calls to also gather early feedback from our developer community. So if you want to build on, on, F, on the FEM, but also contribute to the FEM, to improving the FEM itself, this is your community. And these are just some of the things that past early builders have built as part of this program. Things like SDKs in Go, Assembly, and Rust for the native experience, uh, which is coming in M2.2, as well as playgrounds to get started quickly. And here is what some of the early builders that are part of the F1 cohort are building today. And also, I've listed some open opportunities there for things that we would like to see, but are still open opportunities for you to grab if you'd like to join this program. And some open protocol pro uh, problems if you're more inclined to the protocol side of things. So if any of these catches your attention, come speak to the FEM team. Also, to support you during your development, there are already tons of resources available today. And there are more and more getting written and posted every day. You've got developer forums, videos, walkthroughs, and blog posts, and a lot more. Uh, also, we're looking for not just builders, but also brilliant developers to join the ecosystem and to accompany us during this journey to Write, to continue writing resources and helping out other developers. So even if you don't have a Filecoin app in mind and you just want to join the developer community and help us test, test things out, write resources, educational material, and so on, early builders is the thing that you should join. And these are the faces behind the FEM team. Most of us are here this week. So if you want to come say hi, We'll be very happy to, to speak with you and to tell you more about, about the FEM and the Early Builders program. And just so you have the link, if you want to join the program, there's the link. You can just scan the QR and just hit Submit. And we'll be happy to have you. Thank you so much.